Welcome to the Revival Center of Paso Robles. We're glad you're here. Our prayer is that you'll be blessed and edified by this message and to be encouraged to live out the full potential of your faith. We are located at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California, and we invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. To learn more about who we are and what we believe, please visit us at alphabeth.org. Now, please open your Bible as Pastor Gabe begins teaching today's Word. Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone, cold tomb. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. divide the word of truth. I pray that your word, Lord God, will touch our hearts and we'll be stirred, moved, changed, challenged. God, I pray, God, that we are going to move our brain out of the average and move into the supernatural. God, that we serve a supernatural God. God, I pray, God, that, that we are going to hear things, Lord, in the next few weeks, Lord God, that maybe we don't normally hear in church. But I believe that it's time for the church to become the church, a powerful unit. So I pray, God, that you bless, Lord God, this direction, this teaching, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Pastor Dorothy, if you, if you put up there 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Really, I'm going to start 2016. The two things that you're going to hear a great deal about this year is destiny and families. Because I believe that the church, the plan of God is for us to be a family fulfilling our destinies. Amen. God never intended us to be a group of people that just happen to come to a building once or twice a week and we go through the motions of raising our hands and singing and dancing and then we leave. And No, God never intended that. God intended us to get a family mentality. And the reason the church is a problem with a family mentality is because many of us have no idea what a solid family is even at home. Especially in the day and time that we live now. Dad's going one way, mom's going the other way, kids are before uh, uh, with their iPads and everything else, no one talks to each other. That, that, that was never the plan of God. Amen. The plan of God was family. And I believe that we're living on the precipice of seeing God do some supernatural things. And, I, and, I, and it, 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 it saddens my heart what the church, what the pulpits around America has done to the body of Christ. That I still believe in the old-fashioned principles of holiness. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. That, 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 that's not a word that we want to talk much about. But I believe in holiness. I believe in sanctification, both instant as well as progressive. That we, that we become sanctified when we come into Christ. But as we grow, God moves us into a realm of progressive sanctification. That, that God reveals us those things that we need to share to get rid of our life. What I'm talking about is getting stuff out of your life that's interfering with your destiny. Write, write this down. I, I know Doug has there, but I'm kind of out of sequence here, but I kind of feel I want to start here. A lot of people say man creates his own destiny. That is not the truth. Man does not create his destiny. Destiny is something God creates. So your destiny, I'm not talking about fate now. 
God has created destiny for you, and what we what we create is the paths and the roads that we do to get to that destiny. But destiny is already set. See, some of you have uh, you love God, but yet you have not you have not really pursued your you pursued jobs, you pursued things that you wanted to do, but have you really got a hold of God and asked God, what is my destiny? I'm one of the fortunate people in the world that I believe at 63 years old almost that I am fulfilling the destiny that God has called me to be before I was born. I believe that when I was a seed in my father before I was in my mother's womb that God knew me and I was destined to do what I am doing right now. I, I, there's a lot of things I can do. You know, I, I've worked secular jobs. I've, I've made money doing other things. and There's a lot of stuff I can do, but just because I can do those things doesn't mean that was my destiny. See, there are people here that God has called you to preach, but yet you're laying back in the wings. You know there's a call of God in your life, but you are not pursuing your destiny. God has called some of you to sing and some of you to, 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 to cook. I mean, we got fantastic cooks in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, if God has called you to cook, then you need to start uh, 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 surveying everything you can to be the absolute best cook you can be. Why? Because that's my destiny. If God is really, truly called, not, not because you had children that you became a father or a mother, but if God has given you a father's heart and a mother's heart, quit saying because i got kids, I'm a parent, you need to start pursuing your destiny as a mother and a father. Amen. And giving them the absolute best that you can give them. When a man or a woman understands their destiny, they never cut their own throats because i got a revelation of what God's called me to do. Amen. And I, I, over the past few months, I've been praying about uh, this service this morning because I want to propel you. I want to push you into a place that's going to go well beyond all your past religious thought. You, you've been coming to church, and that's a good thing, but I want God to reveal to you destiny. Everybody say destiny. 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 You know, someone, I was talking to someone the other day and they said, but, but suppose you don't know what your destiny is. That's where you get along with God. Some of these things don't go change except by prayer and fasting. You get along with God and ask God to reveal to me my destiny. Amen. I think you're going to find some interesting things here. People always say, Man creates his own destiny. This is not true. Destiny is created by divine design. Man creates and chooses the paths that he or she will take to get to that destiny. And unfortunately, some of you have gone down roads and, and paths that you should have never gone. So now, now you've been pulled over into this. You've been pulled over. Listen, everybody look at me. I am not talking about salvation right now. There are many of people that have gotten saved. They know Jesus, but they're not fulfilling their destiny. You've given your life to God, so your salvation is intact. But yet you're living a miserable life, and I mean, and, and, and this continual life of torment. Why? Well, I tried this and it didn't work, and I tried this, and I tried real estate, and you know, my my my, my, my dad was in real estate, and, and over the years, my dad always tried to get me to go into real estate. I'm not knocking real estate. I mean, if you do it right, you can make tremendous money in real estate. I tried it. I went to Anthony schools. God didn't call me to do that. I sold cars. And I made money selling cars. But God didn't call me to be a car salesman. I sold golf clubs. I sold golf clubs over the phone. I made $50,000 in one year selling golf clubs over the phone 25 hours a week. Oh, man, you should get that job. No, God didn't call me to do that. God called me to do this. I am, I am destined to tell the story. And I want to tell to anybody and everybody. Why? Because that's what God's called me to do. Amen. Destiny. Look what it says about Jesus in, in uh, third, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed us to sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the very beginning. 
For this purpose. Everybody say purpose. purpose. For this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. One of the reasons, I've got a whole bunch of reasons in the weeks to come, I'm going to talk about it, but Jesus came with a purpose. The, we, 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 we kind of wonder, how come Jesus you know, did all, Jesus could do all this kind of stuff? Because he stayed focused on his destiny. For this purpose. I came to destroy the works of the devil. This, this is about Jesus. Really, what, 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 what I'm saying to you this morning is, I want you to, I want you, I want you to get a paradigm shift. I want you to start changing the way you think. Our human thoughts will often interfere with divine destiny. Are you following me? Our human thoughts will often interfere with divine destiny. There is a destiny upon your life, and the moment you find it, I'll tell you, your life is going to ex uh, escalate into greatness. Amen. You are sitting right here, right here. There are people in the room that God has put volumes of books in you. And if you don't write it, it will never be written. And you'll go into eternity without telling the story that God has placed in you. Destiny. It was destiny that the man of God can say, but as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I can't speak for your house, but as for me and my house, my destiny is that my children and my grandchildren at a young age would know God. Right. Amen. Amen. But, oh, but there's a battle going on. Why? Because now we're bringing in all this other stuff that's, 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 that's clogged up our hearing and our seeing. I want to move you to destiny. Destiny is, isn't the path. Destiny is the destination. The description of death, uh, the definition of destiny is in something uh, that is to happen or has happened to a particular person or thing, a lot or fortune. That's what Webster calls destiny. That's not what God calls destiny. God called destiny. Uh, 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 I know the plan that I have for your life. Amen. See, right now, God has a plan for your life. This is why you've heard me talk many a times. Men, we, we should, when I say men, I'm talking about humanity. We should never make plans. We should fulfill purpose. God has the plan. Now reveal to me your purpose. That woman that you're married to, that, is, that was not an accident. That was part of God's divine plan. Well, maybe it wasn't in the beginning, but you married her, she married you. Now, you now, now you're living in a covenant of a purpose. Quit arguing about this and start turning that situation into destiny. We are a unit that we're going to make something supernatural happen. Huh. You've been designed for greatness. Come on, say it with me out loud. Say, say I've been designed for greatness. Designed for greatness. Come, on, say, come on, say it loud again. I've been designed for greatness. I've been designed for greatness. See, the devil does not want you to look at him and say, devil, leave me alone. I've been, I've been designed for greatness. Huh. Glory to God. I'm somebody because God made me somebody. That's right, man. That's right. Glory to God. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. I'm standing yeah. before you in my human flesh, but guess what? Destiny is in me. Glory to God. I'm going to seize. I'm going to seize my destiny. I'm going to seize my dreams. God has placed everything. God has placed everything in you right now. To fulfill your life. If you really knew what was going on in you right there. We talked about this on Wednesday night. What's in you. And the Bible says that the kingdom of God is in you. If you really believe that the kingdom of God is in you. Then the mind of Christ is in you. And that mind of Christ is a mind of greatness. 
And the moment you know that God is ruling and reigning your life, you're going to quit selling yourself to the highest bidder. The devil bombarding your mind and he's trying to steal your dreams, steal your greatness, and he's trying for you to drown your sorrows, which was, that wasn't the path that God wanted you to go through. God, the enemy is trying to get you to drown your sorrows in alcoholism or drugs or running away. I, I've seen so many men and men and women that are always running away from God. First of all, the dumbest thing in the world. Go ahead and run from God. Because when you get to where you think you're going, guess who you're going to bump into? <laughs> I, 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 I can really help you in life. Be still and know that he is God. Quit running from God because I'll tell you what, whether, whether on a hospital bed or, or, or a prison cell or wherever you're going, when you get to where you think you're running far, far away from God, ask Jonah about that story. Yeah. Jonah was a man who was running from his destiny. Matter of fact, he ar Jonah argued with God. He says, he says, I'll tell you why I don't want to, I don't want to go to Nineveh. Because I, kind of, I, I know the kind of God you are. Those people are heathens, they're horrible people. I'm going to go there and tell them about you, and everybody's going to repent, and, and, and you're not going to do anything to them. They deserve to be crushed. But Joe didn't understand the fact that he had a story of destiny in him. Joe, and, and Nineveh was his destination. So he got on a boat going in the wrong direction from Nineveh, we know the story. You know, we throw them overboard. The story of the whale follows them. You know where that whale was going? Mm. <laughs> where, where Jonah did not want to go. Mm. Destiny. See, the stuff you're going through right now, the, the sooner you respond to the sooner it's going to straighten up. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to quit bringing all these excuses in my life. Why I can't do this? Why I can't do this? And I'm going to tell you, the reason, a lot of the reason your, your health is being so battered isn't because you just got bad health. No, there's an enemy that's attacking your body. Why? Trying to get you to be pulled away from your dreams and from your destiny. God's put everything in your life right now that you, that, that, that you need to succeed. God's word always, always, always goes back to his promises. The more I get into the word, the more God reveals to me how I need to respond to God. See, the old destiny thing, destiny is the magnet. The magnet does not move. But the magnet needs something to attract. So the destiny is the magnet and you are the metal. Hello. And all of a sudden, the destiny of God starts pulling at you. Pulling at you. And then this enemy is try, try, trying, to, trying to break the spiritual gravitational pull and get you over here. Oh, look at me, look at me. This pull isn't always into bad stuff. It's just an unnecessary stuff. Yeah. I'm not talking about sin issues right now. I'm talking about things just, that just get you busy. There's other things that are a little more important. I know I should be in the house of God, but I really need to go to the soccer game this morning. I know I need to be in the house of God, but I need to do this, and I need to do this, and all of a sudden we're, we're pulled. And you, you know what I found out? There are people that faithfully attend church there every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. And then they miss one Sunday. Then they miss Wednesday. Then they miss the next Sunday because of something else. And all of a sudden they're, 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 they're out of it for three or four weeks. Now they're almost embarrassed to come back to church. God, that's not an act of God. There is a destiny destroyer. There's a destiny stealer. He's trying to steal your dreams. So we need to get hold of God. What is... What, 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 what is my destiny? Destiny is the magnet, but we need to give that destiny something to attract to. I, I, I've got a heart for men. You know this. And I am so grieved 
when, when, when I look at men and I look at fathers that have the ability to operate in greatness, but they settle for complacency. <clears throat> that, that they're not doing everything they can to keep their family safe. Oh, I pray for them sometimes, Pastor. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing battle. Someone breaks into your house, you're just not going to lay in your easy chair and pray for the person that breaks in. You're going to stand up and do something about it. Spiritually, we've got to stand up to the plate and say, as for me in my house, we're going to serve God. I'm going to become the husband, become the man, become the father that I'm supposed to be. And I know there's a price to be paid. And that price is tough. This isn't easy stuff. It's work. It's work. You know, I, I go back, I... I, I blame, I do, I blame the pulpits of America for this. Because we've sang sweet, easy songs to the women in the church. And women, you, you guys know how to respond to God. Worship, for most women here, worship is easy for you. You just, oh, hallelujah, you, you're just there. But then, but, but then we got these macho men, I'm not doing that. Oh, you'll do it one day. Got some very dear friends of mine, their children are adults now, but I watched. I think they, they might be watching I watched Jeff Shue. Jeff Shue stands about 6'5, I guess, they're about. And I watched this little boy. Now, now his boy, his son is 6'8. <laughs> but I watched this little boy. Literally watched Dad worship. He was in church years ago, and Jeff was just worshiping God. I saw this. I watched this little boy look up at his dad and went, <coughs> Learn by example. Oh, I'm telling you, there's some grandpas here, you better get a hold of this. Because your grandkids are learning by example. They watch you go to church, but they watch also how you live your life. They listen how you talk to God, but they also listen how you talk to your wife. I I, I tell I tell myself all the time, I you know why you want to tell myself, if I tell myself, you don't have to tell on me. I get myself busted all the time. When Raymond was about two, maybe three years old, I was sitting to my desk, and you know, that, that was the day that, that Pastor Jordan and I, we, we were having a difficult day. You, you might understand this. <laughs> Sometimes married people have difficult days. Well, well, I'll tell you what, you know, at that, that time, she had just kind of gotten, my wife had gotten on my last nerve. You know, and she would say something to me, and what she was saying would kind of hurt. And I would say, we were like throwing these little darts at each other, you know. And, oh, we're married. We're getting along just fine. Leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. That's it. <laughs> so I was sitting at my desk, and, and she said, you know, who did such and such a thing? My response was, I did. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I was looking for a fight. I did. What you going to do about it? <laughs> she said, Okay. Raymond was no more than two, maybe three. She waddled her little self up to me. She put her hands on her hips. She said to me, she says, Papa, what? Why are you talking to Nana that way? <laughs> what way? You said, I did. I said, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. And you did your head like this. <laughs> So I, 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 so I found out, and I, I, I said, if a two-year-old can figure it out, hello? Some of you adults, do you hear what I'm saying? You think you're getting away with stuff. I, you know, your kids are watching you. Amen. Your kids, they, they're watching you how you say, you claim you're going to serve God, and they're going to follow suit. So I made up my mind then that I didn't want to destroy her destiny. So from then until now, she hasn't seen much of that anymore. Because I retained that to the back room. <laughs> God is constantly pulling us. Always pulling us towards his purposes. God is pulling us towards his purposes. There's something God wants from me. You know, quit... Quit fighting God. Listen, God wants to bless you. Amen. 
That's why I'm always talking about tithing and offering. It's not about money. It's a biblical principle that's there. And the moment you quit fighting God, God can open up a whole plethora of things for you. That's right. But you can't quit fighting God. Pastor, I don't understand, but all this, that stuff still don't, don't make sense. Do you realize that the things of God normally don't make human sense? The things of God don't make human sense. This makes sense to me. But God says, I'm not doing this. I want to do this. That makes no sense. But that's why he's God and we're not. The promises of God are always, always holding on us. My, my, my passion for, for the Revival Center is they're, they're moving us. I mean really moving us into great, greatness. I, I, you know what's going to happen? I, I, you know, and this, is, this, is, this is not negative policy, but I'm going to start pushing you, and either I'm going to push you into the presence of God or I'm going to push you out. I don't need any more anchors in my life. Right? Hello? Yeah. I don't, I, I don't need any more people trying to suck the life out of me. I need to start functioning in my destiny and finding people that want to move to their destiny and we're going to quit talking about it and let's get it done and let's get it done together. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the heart of God. Let's get it done. Let's get it done together. Destiny happens. We get there step by step. This isn't magic. The Bible says the, step, the steps of the righteous are God-ordained. We work towards it. There's no magic pills to destiny. Destiny is not an event. Destiny is a process. Wow. That's what Abraham, Abraham said, I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. In other words, I'm here. I haven't arrived. But I tell you what, I know where I'm going. And over the years, I've always known where I'm going, but I've had so many people that have got me over here, got me over here, and I've just made up my mind. That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. And a lot of people don't want to go with me. I'm fortunate that, I am fortunate that I've got a wife of 42 years that has always wanted to go with me. And she, honestly, she, she don't pull against me. It's not the fact that we all, we're, all, we're always on the same page, but we work at it, we try to get on the same page, but she doesn't fight against me. And I don't fight against her. And I know she's a woman of God. And however she responds, if she makes that response, I support her 150%. We've, 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 been, we've, been, we've been in missionary services, you know, and we only had maybe $300 in our account. And there's a wonderful missionary message, and, and when everyone will give us to support the missions, and I'm good. I reach in my pocket, and I kind of, I'm going to put 20 bucks in there. All of a sudden, I look at her, she goes like this. Right. God said that we're supposed to empty out our bank account. I, I wasn't, are you sure that was God? <laughs> <laughs> but, but the moment she felt that, we don't, I don't argue. I said, well, if that's what God says do, do it. And we've done that time after time after time after time. And God has blessed us time after time after time after time. After time. <coughs> I don't know how this stuff works. I just know. I just know that this is a process. It takes work to achieve <laughs> where God is wanting to take you. Too many people, write this down, too many people lack the patience to go through the process to become who they want to be or to whom God is desiring them to be. I think, brother, yeah, there it is up there. Too many people lack the patience. Because in order to get the promises of God, in order to raise up a great family, in order to raise up a great church, it takes patience. And most of them most and most of them brag about the fact that we're not patient people. But the Bible says in your patience possess you your souls. So we gotta start training ourselves into being patient. Someone needs to get this. 
I'm going to tell you why God's bring, been bringing cantankerous people into your life. Because you refuse to become patient. And God will, because God loves you so much that he will bring, he will allow adversity to come into your life in order to get you to where he wants you to be. So the, the moment I'm understanding that, and I'm not no part of past five, ten years, probably the lights finally came on me a little bit, and all of a sudden I realized, okay, I know why Diane Perry's acting that way. A lot of times I look at Diane and she go, don't start with me. <laughs> and I say that to her. But no, I was just too. No. Now I'm understanding that God's loved me so much that God's been the right people in my life to perfect me to become what he wants me to be. And the reason I'm not what I'm supposed to be because I am fighting against the perfecting process. Because I want life easy. Hello? I said, oh, I like easy life. Yeah. I like easy life. I, yeah, I can't, I can't wait till we get to heaven and live in a pain-free environment. Amen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm also learning something. If I can't learn to get along with the people of God here, I might not be spending time with the people of God there. Destiny. Destiny. Write this down. If you don't earn it, then you don't own it. It ain't yours until you earn it. It ain't just going to show up. Destiny is not going to show up. You got to start doing the work to get to your destiny. Hello? It's not just going to, well, I'm, I'm just going to believe real hard destiny is going to show up. Destiny is not going to show up until you're willing to do the work to get to your destiny. And the process of getting to my destiny means there are some physical things I'm going to have to do to move certain things out of my life. I made up my mind in order, you know, your destiny is to get down to your weight when you were married. <laughs> Still the same. <laughs> I, was a, Donald, I was 128 pounds when I got married. Sad. I mean, I, I'll bring pictures of it. I, I mean, I, I look like a 15-year-old kid. <laughs> you know, with tuxedo on, you know, and, you know, and I mean, it, I, I'm going to take care of a wife, God forbid. I don't want to get back to that. But I'm just, you, you decide you want to lose weight, I mean, really, really, really get there. You've got to make some decisions. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. Oh, my. I want these people, I, I want. I want, I want them to come up with a true anti-fat pill. <laughs> Eat as much as you want, and all you do is pop a pill in the morning, and boom, it's gone. <laughs> huh? Yeah. How, how many would like that one? Oh, yeah. 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 Everybody, everybody wants it. It don't happen that way. In order to get to where you want to go, you've got to say no to sugar. You've got to quit being a couch potato. You gotta start moving around. You gotta start exercising. Oh my goodness. This thing is getting worse, isn't it? Yeah. Pray for the preacher. Destiny. Oh, but you're never gonna get there until you do the work. And if you don't earn it, you'll never own it. Someone has asked me, Pastor, you know, how have you done this for 44 years? I didn't quit. It must have been easy. No, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I'm telling you, I, I groomed animals for four years in Cambria. I had an animal grooming shop called Cambria Country Critters. <laughs> And doing that four years was one of the best years of my life because I'd rather deal with 
dogs and cats than deal with sheep. <laughs> Hello. But my destiny was not to have become an animal groomer uh, in this world. My destiny was to be a shepherd. In order to be a shepherd, I gotta deal with sheep. So I think some of you have made me the man of God that I'm supposed to be because I had never prayed so much in my life. <laughs> and I didn't say who that was, Charles. <laughs> if you don't earn it, you won't own it. You got to you got to make your mind up today about some things about you and your life and your family and about your career and everything else. And the moment you make that mind, you start getting get rid of all this other stuff, unnecessary stuff. I want you my destiny. I want my dreams. Fulfilling the word takes work. We have to be willing to remove the barriers to destiny. Let me, let, me, let me give you these six things and then we'll move on. And, and yeah. Number one, what you believe or don't believe about your destiny. You need to make your mind what you believe or what you don't believe about your destiny. Now, what you claim you believe, then it shows up in your actions. Your actions will tell you what you believe. If you really claim you believe God, then you have no problem doing what God says do. But we believe what we don't believe regarding our destiny. Number two, these are the things that are interfering with walking in our destiny. Number two, what you are listening to is ordering your destiny. Who and what you're listening to is what's ordering your destiny. Who's letting talk to you? People that have no dreams? People that are losing themselves? Sorry. You really want to make it financially, but you're asking, asking for asking for advice from people that are broke? Hello? Yeah. You have to too. Who are you listening to? Many times people come to me and ask me certain things. I just fly out to them. You asking the wrong person. I have no idea. I cannot answer that question. The other day, my wife and I we went to Stanford. I don't know if you've ever been to Stanford. But this thing is huge. It's, 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 a, it's a city within itself. It has, it has its own zip code. And then we parked our car, and there's all these buildings there, you know. And I went to this one lady. I said, "Ma'am, I said, where's the the beginning, the 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 enter into the hospital?" She looked at me. and said, "Sir, you're asking the wrong person." <laughs> no, it was her first time, and she didn't know either. Who are we trying to get advice from? You trying to find this, how to stay married by someone that's been divorced four and five times? Get a clue. Hello, wrong people to ask. Now, if you want to know how to get a good divorce, call those people up. <laughs> hey, you, you know I'm right. Yeah. You want to get your car fixed, you don't go to a barber, you go to a mechanic. Who are you listening to? What are they telling you? Watch this. Anybody that tells you anything, that's different from the Word of God. Yeah, you said it right. Run. They are a liar. Don't listen to liars. Anybody that tells you anything that, that goes against the Word of God, they are not telling you the truth. And I'm saying, that's from me on down. If I tell you anything that I cannot substantiate with Scripture, love me, pray for me, but don't believe me. But if I tell you what the book says, Pay attention to who you're listening to. Number three. Your willingness to make an investment in your destiny. Are you making, are you making an investment in your destiny? 
learn because because order make order to get your destiny, it's gonna cost you. It'll cost you something. And if you don't have what you need, then then you then then you work towards it and, and, and you get rid of the old and you bring in the new. Amen. I dress like this because I want to. And nobody else in here have ever told you, I want you to go out and buy a suit and put on a shirt and put on a tie. I don't care what you wear. Well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I do this be this is me. I want to make an investment in my destiny. I would love to be, I'll be honest, I'd I love to be so blessed enough that I can wear thousand dollar suits. I probably never would because I, I understand what money is all about. It's more about suits, but I just I, because I want to make an investment in my destiny. I, I I'll tell you what. I, I'm, I'm just being open with you this morning. I, you know, it just makes me feel good when you go, "Ooh, Pastor, you look good." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Mike, I already was watching this. We were talking about the other day. And I said, you're talking about, you know, I really want us to get close. And that man patted me on my belly and said, well, we can't really get too close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I told him it's okay. That's just a sign that I'm on the level because the bubble's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. What are you feeding your dreams on? What are you feeding your... See, you've got to feed your dreams. You've got, you got to give your dreams and your, your destiny. You've got, you got to give it something to feed on. What are, you, are you feeding it on foolishness or what are you feeding it on faith? What are you feeding your dreams on? Are you feeding your dreams on other people's nightmares? Are you sitting there wasting your time saying, well, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, but you're not doing the necessary things to get what you want? Because it ain't going to come. There's something that you got to do. It's work you got to do. Number five. You need to understand frustration. I found out that frustration is one of the very things that paves destiny. You want to get to your destiny? You got to be willing to fight through the frustration. Yes. Yeah. You got to. The, the frustration is the hard times. I've, I've I've done a whole teaching before on on visions. Write this down. And then we'll get back to this. There's three aspects to a vision. There's the birth of a vision. The birth of a vision. The death of a vision. Number three, the resurrection of a vision. And you will never, never understand the resurrection of the vision until you're willing to deal with the verse, uh, with, 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 the, with, the, with the death of the vision. Except a kernel of seed fall to the ground and it dies, it abides alone. The resurrection comes out of the death. Your resurrection. See, that is the very reason that marriages fail. They get married, and about seven years into that marriage, it seems like all hell breaks loose, and everybody wants to quit. And normally, it's about the seventh or eighth year when marriages start falling apart. Matter of fact, and, and then, then it gets okay. And it lasts again for another five or six years, and all of a sudden there's a death issue again. And most people give up on their destiny. They give up on their dreams when it seems like it has died. When the truth is, it is out the death that comes a resurrection. Frustration. We have to understand frustration. Number six. Everybody say commitment. You will have to commit to your dreams and to your destiny. You've got to commit to it. That commit says, come hell or high water, I'm going to stick this thing out. 
I'm going to make this happen. Why? Because I know that's the call of God in my life. So I'm going to commit to it. You won't, you won't even know it's commitment until you're tested. The test is a sign of commitment. In, in, in pastoring, and, and especially pastoring smaller churches, Last church we were at, we had over 600 people in our church. Started 120, 125 people, grew up to 600. We were on TV twice a week. We, 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 we had every imaginable program you could think a church would have. And I had lost my focus. I became everything I, I despised. Then I come to a small church. And all of a sudden you start getting emails and calls, you know, uh, would you, would, would you consider coming pastor in our church here? I, a friend of mine called me in te from Texas. Well, no, if I'd be willing to move to Texas. And, and, you know, I'll tell you what. All of a sudden, that bait is dangling over here. It's dangling over here. What I need to realize, well, tell you what, everybody look at me. You know why I don't live here? God has not released me from this. How do I know that? Because I believe that this is my destiny. I truly, truly, truly believe that where we're at now, that we're going to be here either until God takes us out or Jesus comes. Are you following me? Who knows? That maybe, maybe this could be my family and your family, but we're going to stay right here. Because I'm so focused on us. Destiny. I want to see this thing work. Well, wow. let me get through this quickly. You don't have to turn to it, but uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse, verse eleven. Paul said, "When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things." So many children, they don't stick with anything. Their attention's over here for a little bit, and then it's gone. It's over here, and then it's gone. And parents have, and most parents don't teach their children to stick with stuff. So therefore, they grow up to be adults that don't stick with stuff. And then we don't know why their world is falling apart. It's because we've trained them badly. We need to let them know. We need to let our kids know. Okay, I got, I got no problem. With that. I have no problem with that. But you do know, once you start this process, as a daddy, as a mother. I'm going to hold you to it. <coughs> and you got to work yourself through that process. My children, as, as they were kids at home, there's, there's a wonderful program when we invest in information called Team Missions. And our kids went to Team Missions. And, and we're talking 13, 14, 15 years old. And, and they, uh, my, my kids went to Honduras. They went to Central Mexico. They went to, uh, in, Sarah Kate was in Indonesia. <coughs> and, uh, who, who was in Venezuela? <coughs> you were in Venezuela? Yeah. So, but, but, but your kids, as, as, as a quote, young, and you don't hear you use the term very often, but as young teenagers, they went around the world. And there's a brochure that every mission that they wanted to go, it, it, it said how much that mission was going to cost. I'm, and I'm, I'm just saying, if, if you and Melina will allow your sons and your daughters get old enough to go, I'll tell you what. Tremendous opportunity. It's, it's a whole, it's a god, it's a godly program, you know. And to go and you think it would cost X amount of thousand dollars. My kids wanted to go. I said, Yeah, you can go. Oh, Dad, so like, give me some money. I ain't giving you a dime. <laughs> that whole year to work through the process. And they babysat and they washed cars and 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 my my my, my mother daughter we were raising goats. She sold goats. <laughs> You know, and when it was down, down to the road, they didn't have enough money, then we helped them out. But I didn't just pay their way. They agreed that that's what they wanted to do. And okay, because you agreed. One, not, you're just not going to back out because you agreed you'd want to do it. So now every dime they got, they got birthday money, they got, they, they, they were saving their money because I wanted to teach them the principles of right. sticking with it. Yeah. That's really, and I, 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 I apologize for the church. But we haven't taught church people how to stick with stuff. Right. We haven't taught them how to stick with stuff. We, we, we just outright let them quit. It's amazing. I, I, the God of Christianity, or let me, the God of churchianity is so fickle. I have people coming. Well, God told me thus and so. Well, and I, 
the moment someone tells me that and God told me, I back off. Because if God told that person to do that, then I ain't got nothing to say. Don't make any sense to me, but that's what God told them. But all of a sudden, then they don't do it. Wait a minute. We got a, we got a problem now. You said God said thus and so. So either God didn't say it or you're being rebellious. Hello? So we pray, so seek the face of God, asking God to reveal to us destiny. And we push ourselves. We push ourselves. Let me, let me run through these things I'm going to give you regarding to the things I'm looking at. 2016 for the Revival Center. Number one, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk much at all because in, in the weeks to come, I'm sure we'll address some more of them. Number one, as a church, we are really going to dial in and we're going to focus in on destiny. Fair warning, you're going to hear some more of this next week. Destiny, we're going to dial What you really want, want us to, as, as individuals as well as families, start dialing our church in destiny. Number two, that we really want to desire to see TRC become a real church. Well, we want to we want to see the revival center become a real church. Number three, <coughs> that we want to create faith so we can become a trusting family. <coughs> Number four. I want us to understand that worship is the direction of God. Everybody look at me. God wants to be worshipped. Somebody say amen. amen. He wants to be worshipped. He wants to be worshipped and your body needs to be trained and taught how to worship. What do we want to be in the presence of God? So there, when, when we get an opportunity to sing, we want to sing. Zephaniah says, God loves you so much that God sings over you. God worships over you. He wants you to worship Him. And you don't worship your hand with your hands in your pocket. I tell you, I, I, I've got something. I mean, this, this is revelation to you. When you start worshiping, I promise you, that chair in front of you is not going to fly away. <laughs> so let it go. Hello. Number five. I'll tell you what the church is supposed to look like. The church is supposed to look like a body of people that have fun and fellowship. Amen. Amen. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That we hang out, we laugh together, we cut up together. I don't, I, I, you know. Actually, it was Ed Florence that said the other day, and Lou and I were talking about it, and I don't know if we're talking about this Saturday or next Saturday, but some men, we, we, we should go get our golf clubs out, and we're going to find some place to go golf. <laughs> Why? Just because. I mean, if you really want to laugh, you need to come and take Steve with you. <laughs> 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 Why do I do this? Because this is family. I would treat I, I would treat my biological sisters and brothers the exact same way. This is family. We laugh together. We pray together. We, we cry together. We, we 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 quit being so religious and start being the church. Number six. That I want the revival center to have an outreach, working outside the four walls to reach a community. That God is desiring to save. Yeah. That once this weather changes, we start the prayer tent again. That we have so many people that say, "You know, I pastor at least once a week, I, I want to become part of the ones that serve at the prayer tent." I just want to go out there. I want to raise up people to take a lot of these flyers that we got here and start walking the community, and just just talking to people about Jesus, give it to them. No pressure. Oh, that that's just so uncomfortable to me. That's probably why you need to do it. Because it's uncomfortable to you. Because you're so comfortable, many of you are not, aren't, really aren't doing anything because you, you want comfort. Hello? We want to we be in a church and we feel comfortable. 
man told me not so long ago that he moved out of the area, but he says, man, he says, every time you're preaching, and a lot of times I'm preaching, I got something to say. I just look directly at that person. That guy came, he says, Pastor, he says, I tell you, he says, every time you look at me like that, he said, this scares the hell out of me. <laughs> I said, praise God, I'm doing my job. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I want to happen. We need the presence of God in our hearts, amen. amen. There needs to be a shaking and a stirring. Number seven, I really want to build a men's program and watch the men of this church become extremely strong. Men going to promise keepers. Putting our own men's conferences here. Serving other church, helping other churches with men's conferences. And I want men to step up to the plate and say, hey, that's what I want to do. Number nine, I want to build a... Oh, number eight. You guys are doing good. Thank you. Number eight, we're, I, want to, I, I want to build a young adult group. I didn't say youth group. I was a youth pastor. And for the most part, not all, for the most part, most youth groups are some of the most diabolical things in the world. When, 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 my, when, my, when my kids were young... And when we, we didn't have a church, and I sent them off with another local church to Marriage Great America, where they came back, and they came back and said, Dad, you won't believe what was going on on the bus. And they said, tell what was going on on the bus, on this church bus, and it was, being, it was being sanctioned by the youth pastor. I said, you'll never go there again. Why? Because I'm concerned about her destiny. I don't expect the kids in our church to act like little, you know, little, perfect adults. Not at all. But I want them to be in the presence of God. I want your children to watch your worship. Amen. And we wind up building a young adults group. I want. There was a, there was a lady that was here on Thursday night for prayer. She told some of the churches she was going to do. We started going to church because we understood that it was a spiritual church. She said, now I talk, I talk to the pastor, and there's nothing. They don't even believe in the movement of the Spirit of God. And whenever they do, it's pushed off to some back room. Oh, no, I want your kids to watch you worship. I want, I want them to hear you praying in tongues. I want, to, I want them to see an authentic movement of God. When I'm talking about people slaying the Spirit, I'm not talking about people that you know, doing, I'm talking about a, a real move of God. See, I, I'm from the old school. I, I think when people person get slain in the Spirit, when they get up, their life's changed. Hello? Yeah. If, I, if all I've done is gone through this thing and I get up and my life doesn't change, then I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost didn't slay you in the Spirit. That was called flesh. Come on now. Number nine, I expect this year that we are going to at least double in attendance in this building. My, my focus is the fact, see, my focus is the fact that, that we don't wind up having two services because we, because we don't wind up having 80 to 100 in the first service and 80 to 100 in the second service. And by then we can go out and we can build, we can build or buy something else. But I'm so focused on this now. And either you're going to go with me or you're going to get left behind. Oh, well, Pastor, I don't like that. That's not like a threat. I'll just go to another church. That's, that, that, might, that, that might work for you. Because the new people are going to need your seat anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you sound so harsh. No, I'm saying it's time for us to push. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. It's time for us to get serious about God's business. Push. And number 10, this is now, it was a, there was a whole bunch more stuff that I'll give you later on. Number 10 in here. I want us to create an effective building program. We, we, got, we got envelopes back there that says building program. That has nothing to do with your tithe, that has nothing to do with your offerings. That we go above and beyond time. See, this stuff has still got to go on. During the cold, we still need heat in this place. You know, and what I've seen people all do over the years is, okay, oh, I, I need to get the building program, so I'm going to go with tithing and I'm going to put it over here in the building program. That is not proper and it's not right. 
if we are going to be the church, then we start doing things and we're going to build an effective a building for Why? So we can go out there and buy a piece of property. And we can build a building. Everybody say debt free. Debt free. Debt free. Build a building debt free. Lower that God. Amen. 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 That's, that's the mentality of destiny. The, the mentality of destiny is not bondage. The, the, the mentality of destiny is freedom. So we're going to start doing this stuff debt free. You're going to hear, we're, not, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to start laying a foundation. We're going to talk a great deal about destiny, a great deal about families. You know? Now, if this made sense to any of you, then on Wednesday night, I trust you're going to bring somebody with you. If this makes sense to you, then next Sunday, you're going to hold another family. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's close to 30,000 people in Paso Robles. And only 8% of them go to church on any given Sunday. So out of 30,000 people, really only about 2,400 people go to church. That means there's 26,000 people out there that are unchurched. Don't tell me you can't find someone to bring to church with you. And then there are people out there that have gone to church. But the church has done them wrong and they're hurt. Quit letting that be an excuse and say, tell you what, you need to bring me, you need to come to the revival center. Because this is where people get revived. Amen. 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 We're going to be focused and we're going to get the job done. Father, I know this is the beginning of 2016 and I've heard you say what we need to do. God, I speak destiny over every man, every woman that's here. Right now, I stretch my hands towards you, each one of you, forgetting those things which are behind, and you press towards those things which are ahead. God has brought you to this place for a time such as this. We have been called to be the church. There are wonderful churches here in North County, wonderful pastors. And they're doing what God's called them to do. But as a father in this house, as for me and my house right here, we shall serve the Lord. Amen. God, whatever I teach, if it's biblical based, if it's grounded in the word, then we don't have the right to make a decision about it because you've already decided. And I speak right now, obedience is better than sacrifice. Glory to God. So we need you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for stopping in today and viewing the message from Pastor Gabe Abdelaziz. Our vision is that your life will be enriched by the teaching of the Word of God and experience victory in your life. We once again invite you to attend the Revival Center at 3850 Ramada Drive in Paso Robles, California. Worship services are Sunday mornings at 10 and Wednesday evenings at 7. For more information, go to alphabeth.org. Somebody here that's been watching this, God is calling you and bringing you back home. You run, you hit God knows where you're at, and He loves you with an everlasting love. And all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, come back in my heart. I repent. I need you. I'm not going to run anyway anymore. I'm going to start running towards you somebody here, you need to hear this. This is a day that God is getting ready to change your life. And if we at the Revival Center, we're, we're here. We want to help you. We got plenty of people that we can 
uh, get back to you and, and they would pray with you and pray for you, <laughs> encourage you. And you're more, you're more than welcome to call us here at the Revival Center at area code 805 434 5170. It's 805-434-5170. Or you can email us at alphabeth, A-L-P-H-A-B-E-T-H, at tcsn.net. And we love you. As, as I pray for those in this room, I pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for the next few minutes I pray that you're going to revolutionize our life. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us, as well as to these that watch us by way of video. God, as we look at the signs of the times, we can tell that Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. Bless, Lord God, this time that we spend together right now. In Jesus' name.